Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Gil Zaragoza, and welcome to Bible Concepts with Pastor Gil Zaragoza, where Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, and on to Him be the honor and the glory forever and ever. And all of God's people shout a good hearty amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning, amen, we have a very powerful program for you this morning. And uh, I'm going to say something uh, this has gone with a lot of prayer. This particular program this morning, amen, has uh, been lifted up to the Lord. In fact, before coming, uh, we just prayed and we asked the Lord for guidance and direction, amen, on what He would have uh, for us to share with you this morning. So before anything, we're, we're going to pray. Uh, I believe we need to pray, amen. I, I do believe with all of my heart that God is going to speak to His people He's going to speak to you this morning. And so we're going to pray and we're going to believe God for the best uh, time that we've had in His Word and in His presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, let's believe God together and let's just pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you. We adore you, Father. We magnify you, Father, this morning, Father. Lord, we want to thank you for this day that you have made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. And we declare your glory in this telecast this morning, Father. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this telecast. We say come, have your will, and have your way this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we flow with you this morning, Father. And Lord what you have put on the inside of us to preach to your people this morning. Father, I ask you for a mighty anointing. Lord, you speak and not I. And I pray for the congregation this morning, Father. Lord, give them open ears to hear your word and a receptive heart to receive your word. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that's going to be accomplished here this morning. Father, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore you, Father, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom honor and glory be forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, and all of God's people shout a good hearty, amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, amen. Well, we trust that you have enjoyed, amen, uh, the previous four programs that uh, my wife Emma and I uh, presented to you, uh, I'm going to say that uh, you know when we when we came before you, my wife and I, we were going to go a certain direction, but then the Holy Ghost took over and just you know had us minister, Amen. The last month, the month of February, uh, concerning the importance of connecting to a local church. And uh, we trust that you heed the word of the Lord. Amen. Uh, we gave you scriptures. Uh, we gave you uh, pastoral admonitions uh, concerning connecting to a local church. And um, as you can tell right now, uh, we have a new set. And we thank KSE uh, for, you know, helping us, amen, to spread the gospel uh, with this wonderful new set uh, that is before you. And of course, you, you can see here, you can see in this set, uh, our city, El Paso, Texas. And you know, I pray for our city every day. I pray for this region. Um, we pray for the Spirit of the Lord to be poured out. And uh, for the blessing of the Lord to be upon this city. And uh, you know, uh, when we were... Uh, Last with you in the month of January, we uh, were talking about how to develop, how to uh, develop a, re a relationship with God. I just want to make sure I got here. Yeah, how to develop your relationship with God. We have the notes here. But this morning, Amen. I, I, I want to, and we're going to continue with it. But this morning, I have a very strong prompting from the Lord, and I, and I am going to say something here. Uh, Prayer has gone up for this particular telecast this morning. 
Uh, you know, at our church, Faith Bible Fellowship of El Paso, Texas, we minister some things and and, you know, uh, and that's for the local church, it's for the local body. And, and we're thankful to the Lord for that, to be able to shepherd the people of God at Faith Bible Fellowship of El Paso, Texas. But I have a very strong stirring to share with you. And I know we're already uh, three months into 2017. But I want to share with you, and I, I, I have a very strong witness in the Holy Spirit in my heart to share with you. Uh, what the Lord gave us on December 31st, 2016, New Year's Eve. We have a New Year's Eve service, and this past New Year's, um, I believe that it was one of the most powerful services yet. Yes, we say Happy New Year and so on and so forth, but we also like to uh, share the Word of God. And uh, I uttered something in the service and I have it written here on paper. Amen. Uh, now the Bible tells us, and I'm just going to share with you, amen, a portion of Scripture is going to appear there on your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for the honor and glory of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for the honor and glory of the Lord. And it's going to appear there on your screen, uh, verses 4 through 11, for the honor and glory of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. The Apostle Paul is writing the following under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of the church in Corinth concerning the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I want to let everybody know that our church is a Spirit-filled church. I'm a spirit-filled pastor. I speak in tongues. I pray in tongues. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit with, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And so having said this, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, the Holy Ghost inspired the Apostle Paul to write the following to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 4. It reads as follows. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, there are nine manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Three of them reveal something. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Another three do something. The gift of faith, the working of miracles, and the gifts of healing. And the other three say something. Prophecy, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Now, we say, you know, we, we say this to you because I want to give you scriptural precedence for what we are going to read. What was read and given on New Year's Eve was the spirit of prophecy working during the service. And the Lord spoke in the service through an individual, and it was definitely of God. And the spirit of the Lord said this, in 2017, there will be an unprecedented move of the Spirit of God that we have not seen before. A very powerful and sovereign move of God that no one will be able to stop. In 2017, the true remnant of the body of Christ is about to enter into its finest hour that will be, watch this, that will be the beginning of preparations the beginning of preparations, not the preparations, the beginning of preparations 
for the rapture. For the true remnant of the body of Christ in 2017, every month will be a miracle month. Hallelujah. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken for the glory of God by the Holy Ghost. The key operative word for 2017 will be revival. Praise God to whom all blessings flow. Now, you know, having read this prophecy, scripture was also given. And the principal scripture that was given is Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, why don't we go there? Joel chapter 2, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Joel chapter 2, the book of Joel in the Old Testament. Joel chapter 2, and it's going to appear there on your screen, verses 21 through 32. 21 through 32. Joel chapter 2, verses 21 through 32. And in this portion of Scripture, now, in verses 28 through 32, we're familiar with this passage. Those of you who are Pentecostal or charismatic, amen, we're familiar because verses 28 through 32 of the book of Joel, chapter 2, was uttered by Peter in Acts chapter 2. And if you look, uh, I'm not going to have you go there. In, in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses, and I, I want to give you the right uh, uh, you know, portion of Scripture for this, so I want to give you exactly... Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, was uttered by the apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through, uh, uh, let me just put this uh, here, uh, uh, verse, verse 21. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, was uttered by the apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, and it was uttered in verse 17, through verse, uh, verse 21, verses 17 through 21 of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21, amen. Peter uttered what was written in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32, which says, and I'm going to read Joel chapter 2, verse 28 through 32. It says this, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, we're familiar with this portion of Scripture. If you're in Pentecostal circles or in charismatic circles, this has been read time and time and time and time again. But in our New Year's Eve service, we had a prompting from the Lord to start at verse 21. And the Holy Spirit spoke to our hearts and said, in order for verses 28 through 32 to come to pass, verses 21 through 27 will be, will be fulfilled before verse 28 through 32 occur. Let's read verse 21. Uh, again, you know, we read verse 28, let's see, verses 28 through 32, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. We read this, but then the Holy Spirit said, why don't you start with verse 21? Look at what's going to happen in verses 21 through 27 before 
the outpouring of the Holy Ghost begins to occur. Verse 21, for the honor and glory of the Lord. Watch this. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Hallelujah. Verse 22, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former, the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my Spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass... Watch this, verse 32, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, in reading verses 21 through 27, there's going to be some things that are going to take place before this outpouring occurs. There's an outpouring coming. In 2017, there shall be an unprecedented move of the Spirit of God that we have not seen before. A very powerful and sovereign move of God that no one will be able to stop. In 2017, the true remnant of the body of Christ is about to enter into its finest hour that will be the beginning of preparations for the rapture. For the true remnant of the body of Christ in 2017, every month will be a miracle month. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken for the glory of God by the Holy Ghost. The key operative word for 2017 will be revival. Now what's going to take place uh, for the true remnant of the body of Christ, which will be its finest hour. Well, if you look at the scripture in verse 21, that the Lord is going to do great things. Amen. He's going to give us the former rain and the latter rain. He said, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The former rain and the latter rain is going to come together. Hallelujah. And, and verse 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. I am going to tell you right now, the Spirit of the Lord is going to restore the years that the enemy has stolen. Dreams, goals, plans, amen. God-given dreams, God-given plans. I'm going to tell you right now, for a whole lot of the body of Christ in our region, we are about to enter into our finest hour. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's going to be a whole lot of restoration happening in the body of Christ in our region. 
There's going to be restoration of dreams, of goals, God-ordained plans. Amen. What you thought is never going to come to pass is going to come to pass this year in 2017. You better shout a good amen out there, somebody. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of the Lord that the Lord is going to deal wondrously with you in 2017. The word of the Lord that was given in, on New Year's Eve, that in, for, the, for the true remnant of the body of Christ, every month will be a miracle month. Now, I know we're already three months into, into uh, 2017, but I want to tell you something. You can believe God right now for your miracle this month, next month, the month after. Come on, you better shout a good amen. Why? Because God is about to deal wondrously with you. You're his child. You have been bought by the blood of Jesus. You have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You are a saint of God. And the Lord is about to deal wondrously with you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You better shout a good amen out there. Amen. Praise God. And there's going to be a restoration. He said, I will restore to you the years. I'm going to tell you something. There are dreams and, and, and goals and, and things that I had over the years. I'm telling you right now, as we're standing here right now, every dream that this ministry has had is coming to pass right now. It's coming to pass right now. It's coming to pass. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart. And he said, Son, you have not seen the best yet. I am about to deal wondrously with you. And not only with you, tell my people, tell my people that I am about to deal wondrously with them and they will never be ashamed ever again again. I am telling you right now, we, the body of Christ here in this region, we are about to enter into our finest hour that will be the beginnings of preparation, the beginning, the beginning of preparations for the rapture. Amen. We are going to stand out in such a way that the world is going to take notice. And I'm here to tell you as a preacher, get ready. Get ready to receive the blessing of the Lord. Get ready to receive the favor of God. Get ready to receive the wisdom of God, the insights of God, the divine direction of God. I am going to tell you right now, you better be in prayer and you better be in the word because God is going to deposit things into your spirit that are not only going to bless you, but they're going to cause to be a blessing to others in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You better shout a good amen out there. I am telling good news this morning. Right now by the Spirit of the Lord, many of you are being reawakened again. You're being reawakening. You're being reawakened rather. It's, it's a reawakening right now that is happening in the realm of the Spirit. And I'm going to tell you right now what the enemy has done to you. God is going to turn it around. There's going to be a big turnaround coming to your house and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is about to deal wondrously with you in 2017. And I pray that you will release your faith and say, God, God, come to my house. God, come into my home. Come into my family. Come into my marriage. Come into my church. Come into my ministry. Come into my business. Come into my profession, Father. Be the Lord and Savior. Deal wondrously with me. I receive the word of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something right now. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, you know, the Lord, he said, release it, release it, release it, release it. And this is the time. This is the day, this is the season that you're hearing this word. And I'm going to say to you right now, get prepared for revival. Get prepared for revival. I'm going to say to you, as far as our church is concerned, and as far as this ministry, I said, Lord, I embrace revival. I open myself to revival. Lord, revive your people once again. And I'm going to say something right now. What is happening in our nation, I'm telling you, we need God in our nation. We need God in our region. We need God in our city. It's no coincidence that, that El Paso, Texas is right here in this set. We are believing God 
for an outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord in our city, in our city, in our county, Las Cruces, Ciudad Juarez, uh, uh, all the surrounding towns. Amen. It's time for revival. And 2 Chronicles 7.14, that's the open door for revival right now. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. It's time for all of us as the body of Christ to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. When we do that, now somebody will say, well, Pastor Gil, Pastor Gil, Pastor Gil, you know, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You know, there's no wickedness in me. I'm a child of God. Yeah, well, praise God for that. But we need to pray for our entire region and stand in the gap and be a people of God, not just in word, but also in actions. We need to be a people. We need to step up to the plate and be the people of God and intercede and do what Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their, and heal their land. I want to tell you something. Our nation needs healing like never before. And the church needs to stand at the forefront. You see, because as, our, as, as the church goes, as the church goes, so does the nation go. And if there's chaos in our nation, it's because the church is asleep. Let's reawaken ourselves as the body of Christ and take our place and use the name of Jesus and put the adversary on the run and ask God to come to our region and have revival like we have never seen before. Father in heaven, thank you, Father, for what has been accomplished here this morning. And Father, we do give you the praise. We do give you the honor. Let your spirit, Father, be poured out through this camera and into all of our region in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen.